this is Jim with Humanized Technologies coming to you from an unfamiliar spot, which is the kitchen. Now, I'm in the kitchen to show you a practical use of virtual reality video. So I am recording today's uh, episode, so to speak, uh, using a product called the Views XR. Now, the Views XR is a 360 degree camera, but what, you're, what I'm using today is the camera in a 180 degree mode. So by pushing this little button in the back, it opens up the camera. I have a left and right eye. So then I have a stereo camera. Now the reason that's important is that when you're shooting in VR, a VR headset also has a left and a right eye. So when you put on a VR headset, I can actually see what's going on in 3D. Now the camera is 180 degrees. So if you are on your PC right now, just take your mouse, grab this, the, uh, the image a little bit or your finger on your, on your mobile phone and follow me. And you can see that I can actually move out of the center of the field of view of the camera in order to move the action around. Now this makes things very simple if you're doing YouTube or other events where you don't have multiple camera positions. I can set one camera position and then I can film in an entire area, all right? So to really embarrass myself, um, I figured I would do a little bit of baking. Now baking is not my strong suit. I'm gonna give you that standard disclaimer up front. I do live in Texas and I can do a pretty mean barbecue, but because it's the holidays, I figured I will do a little bit of bacon just for fun. In fact, uh, my wife said, hey, you need some cookies, so I'll make some cookies, so we'll make some cookies. Um, I'm making a recipe that I have not made before. Um, there is a pastry chef by the name of uh, Pierre Harm Harmon. Um, he is based out of France and I found this thing that's pretty simple to make, but it looked really good. And they're called the uh, Esfahan Sabli. And so I'm sure I butchered that and put down in the comments uh, how I should really pronounce it, but that's where we're at. Okay, so very simple. Uh, it's kind of a little rolled cookie with a very kind of dry dough and we'll cut them. You'll see here exactly how we get started. The first thing we're gonna do is take a little bit of finishing sugar. Now, whoops, make a mess already. Uh, if you're not familiar with finishing sugar, finishing sugar is just a really coarse ground sugar that you can use. Um, it doesn't break down when you cook it. It doesn't melt, so to speak. So what we'll do is we're gonna use this later on to coat the dough before we cut it. And then that way um, it'll kind of put a crusty on the outside. All I'm gonna do is put that into a, a little Ziploc bag. And I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of uh, rose extract. Now, rose extract is kind of hard to find. If you do find rose water, you can use rose water, but you need about three times as much if you're using rose water. Rose extract is a little bit stronger, quite a bit stronger. And uh, in fact, I'm using the water day, so I'm gonna just do a, a tab bit more. And then uh, to help make this look a little bit festive, I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little bit of red food coloring in with the sugar and rose water. And we'll just cap that up like that. Close this, give it a nice little shake. And so what we've made is that finishing sugar is now got a kind of nice little red tin to it as well as the rose flavoring. So we'll just set that aside for now down here. We'll get back to that in just a minute. The next step is that we're gonna go ahead and start the mixer to soften some butter. And so we're gonna use a cup plus three tablespoons of butter. And let me get a spatula, which I failed to get out earlier. Of course, I don't have a spatula in here right now. Oh yeah, I do. There we go. No peeking in my drawers. All right, so um, one stick of butter plus three tablespoons. And I'm just gonna drop that here into the mixer. Now, there, you know, I don't know how much you, uh, you cook and I don't do it very often. Uh, in fact, I bake less than I cook. Uh, so there are multiple attachments for your blender. Um, this is a beater, um, it whips, uh, whips things up. Uh, this is a dough hook if you're going to make breads or pizza dough, that type of stuff. And this is actually the beater blade. And this is what you use to make like cookies and stuff like that. So right now I'm going to just put that onto here. 
and bring up the magic level. And we're gonna just turn it on. And we're gonna let it run for about two minutes while it starts to um, soften up that butter a little bit that's in there. Just on a kind of a medium speed on there. Kind of hard to see what's going on, but let it go. Uh, so while that's going, I wanna take the next step, which is to take dried raspberries. Now, I don't know how often you ever get a chance to see dry ras raspberries. I didn't even know it was a thing. Um, but you can buy freeze dried raspberries. They look like so. And just simply lay them out. Because I don't want big chunks of raspberry in my cookies, what I'm gonna do is simply put it in between two different pieces of wax paper and then gently kind of crush it down. Now, you can use the bottom of a frying pan, you can use something like that to help break these apart a little bit. It doesn't matter, it doesn't have to look good, but I think if you go too fine, in my experience, what happens is it turns into a powder and it turns around and turns your entire dough kind of a red color. So for me, I'd rather keep them a, a bit big, a little bit bigger chunks in there. And I think that's looking pretty good right there. So what I'm gonna do while that's going is I'm gonna just turn this off for a second. I'm gonna just knock this off of the beater a little bit. Off the side of the bowl. And now I'm gonna bring this up a little bit higher speed. Oops, helps if I bring this up first. Um, a little bit higher speed this time. I'm gonna let that run for about three minutes so I can really get a lot of um, air in there, some separation, really break it apart. So while that's going, let me stop being irresponsible and put this in here. Um, so now what I have in here is one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Um, I actually had an interesting debate. Maybe you can put down in the comments below. Um, I've always sifted. And I was talking to somebody yesterday who said, oh, you don't need to sift flour anymore because of the way it's manufactured. I don't know, I still, uh, as a purist, I think that sifting still is necessary, but again, you can put comments down below if you think sifting is, is necessary. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw all of this into here, like that. Nice little trash can down in here, so we'll put that there. And I'm just gonna use a little wisp, and I'm just gonna wisp that all together. Just incorporate the dried raspberries into the flour mixture, just like so, okay? So now we're good on that side of things. All right, so the butter's looking nice and soft. So now what I wanna do is I'm going to take a third of a cup of granulated sugar, and uh, this is not the same finishing sugar that we have for the outside. This is uh, the, um, just a regular granulated sugar. So let's throw that in there. Um, and then I'm gonna go back to rose extract. And on the inside of the, um, of the mix itself, we're gonna put um, uh, one, hmm, we can remember how much it was, a half a teaspoon, yes. So this was a half a teaspoon so let's go to half of your rose extract. Now, again, I'm, whoop, I should always do it. My mom reminded me when I was a kid, never measure over your bowl, because if you go too much and you spill, then you're gonna spill into your food. So she taught me to always measure outside and then drop it in. All right, so then we got a rose extract in there. And then the last piece that I'm gonna put in here is a quarter teaspoon of fleur de sel. Now, I actually just learned about this stuff not long ago. It is a French salt. It's extremely delicate as far as its flavor is concerned, but it is amazing in its flavor. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in there, about a quarter teaspoon. Actually, you know, I like this stuff so much, I'm gonna give it a little bit more. Not too much, just enough. But if you have never had um, this fleur de sel, de sel it is, Absolutely amazing, it's, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. All right, let's bring this uh, bowl back up. We're gonna let this go here and whip it all up and make it nice and smooth. And while it's going, I'm gonna just uh, clean this mess up just a bit. 
There you go. All right, this is gonna run for three minutes and then we'll be right back. All right, through the magic of digital voodoo, we have sped up three minutes of time into no time whatsoever. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and scrape the beater off. And then I'm going to actually take this bowl out of here for a second. Actually, just take this whole thing off for a second. And what I wanna do is scrape the side of the bowl. Try to get all that nice soft butter and everything down there at the bottom, get it off of the sides. Like so. Okay. So now what we have is our whipped butter with um, our fleur de sel, as well as our sugar down there in the bottom. It's been uh, beat for about a total of five minutes. So two minutes up front, and then we did uh, about three minutes at a bit of a higher speed. Now comes the fun part, because what we're gonna do is, if we can get this back on here, right? There we go. Okay. So this is the flour mixture that I made. Uh, we're gonna take all of this flour at one time, and we're going to incorporate it in here. Now, I know that some of you might be thinking, oh wow, why would you go all at once? Well, this is where Chef Pierre comes in because he obviously knows what he's talking about. It does make a difference, and I don't know why, of um, adding the flour gradually versus putting it all at once. However, the one thing to keep in mind is that when you do turn these back on, uh, <laughs> you do run the risk of getting a bunch of flour up in your face. So what you wanna do is you wanna pulse it a bit and get that mixture kind of blending together slowly like this. And uh, I'll see if we move this over here a little bit. If you can see, if you look down, you'll be able to see as this starts to incorporate a little bit better into a little mixture in there, okay? So let me just reach over here, here we go. See how it's kind of balling up a little bit and starting to incorporate that flour into the mixture? We'll just make sure we're knocking down, make sure we don't have any butter that's clinging back to the sides a little bit. We want it all to get incorporated the best that we can. Okay. Now what we're looking for is a consistency where this starts to clump together and starts to make a soft dough. Because it's that soft dough that we're gonna roll out uh, in our next step and then use that uh, to bring this all together. So let's just keep that going for a second. While that's going, I'm just gonna grab a little piece of wax paper, which we'll need this in just a minute anyway. So we'll do a little bit of multitasking. I'm just gonna lay out, let's just lay this here for now, I guess. Oh, that's looking good. So I just want to go until it just starts to come and keep the side of the bowl clean. And that's about where we're at right now, okay? We're just now kind of keeping the, the butter mixture is just working to take the side of the bowl and bring all of that mixture in. So I think that's good for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pull all of this off. Put the bowl down, there we go. Knock the rest of that flour off, there we go, good. All right, so I get a bit of a dough mixture. Okay, now for this next part, you do want to make sure you have clean hands, so do make sure you do that. And then just to ensure that I don't have things that are sticking to the table, and by the way, I did clean off the granite counter before, uh, before I got started. I'm gonna put a little bit of flour down on here. Okay. Oops, well that was silly. All right, so now I'm gonna take this dough and kind of compact it together a bit. 
And what I really want to make are four kind of equal pieces out of this. So let's start with, uh, that might be a little bit much, two. Certainly not one of the, uh, maybe I should get on that show. What's that show, Worst, worst Cooks in America, worst, worst Chefs in America, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I thought this was a good idea to, to do. But you know what, I think the reason I wanted to do this is because I work in technology all of the time and I've got a couple passions that I love to do. Um, one is I enjoy getting out and riding my motorcycle. Uh, the second is I enjoy golfing, although sometimes you can argue what I do, whether or not it's golf or whether or not it's a mess. Um, but I also love to cook. And like I said, I do love to cook more so than I like to bake. But my mom, when I was younger, um, taught me a lot. I mean, she did a lot of baking and um, I don't know, it's just there's something about it, being able to smell the, ha uh, smell the house as things are cooking and it's just amazing. So anyway, um, I've divided the dough into four separate pieces now and all I'm going to do is make four logs and about eight inches long, I guess. And what we're going to do later on after these have a chance to chill in the refrigerator a little bit is we're going to then use these to um, uh, put, we're gonna cut them up. Anyway, you'll see later on, we'll get to that part later. So I'm just gonna put this rose sugar that we made earlier, and I'm just gonna lay it out on a piece of wax paper. And then I'm gonna take one of these logs. Actually, let's, let's go ahead and make all the logs first, why not? Just in case we decide we want to change the log somehow. <laughs> I don't know. So again, back to my, my piece, right? So I, I'm a technology guy and I have these other passions and often I'm asked, people ask me like, okay, Jim, what, what is virtual reality going to be used for? And you know, I, I sit on some really interesting boards with distant, different industry groups and you know, there's, there's a group of people who really understand where the future of virtual reality is going and, and how powerful of a tool it is. And then there's some people who maybe you're struggling a little bit about, boy, I don't want to wear a headset and it doesn't make sense. And so what I wanted to try to do today is give you a, a bit more of a practical application. And uh, can you imagine if you take this technology and then put it in the hands of a true professional who know how to produce a video, who know how to put together sound effects, who know how to well, know how to bake, <laughs> who, who knows? Me, I'm more about just trying to see how much of the food I can get on myself, I guess. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna grab some wax paper. Oh man, it's Texas strength wax paper there. All right, I'm just gonna lay this here just for a second. Now I'm gonna take one of these logs and I'm gonna roll it through that rose sugar that we made earlier, kind of. Put a nice crust on it. Really get it kind of down into the crevices and everything. We'll want that later on. Nicely packed in there. And then we're just gonna roll it up. Put it inside of some plastic wrap like. A little bit. All right, so we have all of our little Rolls, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the refrigerator. Uh, we're gonna let them sit in there for about an hour. Um, you know, they say you can go there up to three days. And uh, if they sit there for three days, I can imagine they'll be nice and cold. But I wonder how that sugar on the outside, whether it gets becomes a little bit more crusty or not, who knows. All right, so for now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off and then, uh, I'm gonna come back and we'll go to the next step. Okay, compliments of some digital voodoo. We have now cleaned up the cooking area. Uh, the dough has been in the refrigerator for about, uh, about an hour or so. Uh, I have managed to clean but not put away. In fact, if you look over this way, right, this is probably my weak link and everything else is cleaning up afterwards. I do make a big mess when I, when I bake and cook, um, but I do try to keep it as clean as I can. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I've got uh, a cookie sheet with some parchment paper on it. 
So let's just lay this out like so a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna grab a bit of a cutting board thingy just, just to be, I don't know what, probably just put it back on the counter the way that I had it, but who knows. Um, and then uh, let's go ahead and grab the rolls. You notice I didn't open this side of the refrigerator because I don't want you to see what a mess it is in there. All right, so here's our, our rolls that we've made. Um, and now, really simple and easy to make, all we're gonna do is take the dough out of the real roll that we made. And then, these ends get kind of, yeah, they're kind of a mess. So I'm just gonna cut off the end. That's the best part of cutting it off, I guess. And then what we wanna do is we wanna just cut these back into maybe about half inch pieces. Boy, that butter got kind of hard. So we're just gonna cut these back like so. About a half an inch. Oh, look at this piece here is the end. I don't wanna cook the end. <laughs> I'll eat it. Oh, it's kind of a big piece. And then I'm gonna just lay these out onto the cookie sheet. And if you look down over here, we should be able to get a good sense of depth of that 3D feeling from the virtual reality headset. What do you think? Five across. It shouldn't spread very much, so we'll do five across. Actually, you know what? Maybe we give them a little bit more room. Let's do four across, and then that way they have a bit more room. I don't think they're going to open up much, but or spread out much. You never know. All right, I think that's good. So now I'm going to go ahead and put these in the oven. Uh, the oven's been preheated to 325 degrees. Um, I'm going to put one here on the top rack, and then we'll put the second one down here in the lower rack. I'm gonna set the timer for nine minutes, actually. Actually, cancel this uh, timer. I'm gonna make it 10 minutes. And I'm gonna hit timer. All right, so the reason I'm doing 10 minutes is the recipe actually calls for you to cook somewhere between 18 and 21 minutes. I tend to like to undercook things a little bit. But because I'm cooking on two levels of the uh, oven, and I actually have two different types of um, cookware, I wanna rotate them. So halfway through, I'm going to pull them out, flip them around the other way, and also switch the shelves so they'll get kind of uh, a uniform heat. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, that's now on the countdown. I'm gonna pause the video, and then we'll be back in just a minute. The oven just went off. Let me just grab a minute here. Yes, because I do do a lot of smoking. I have these very bright orange oven mitts. Um, look at, pretty cool, huh? Um, we didn't have silicone stuff like this when I was a kid, so I got a lot of burns. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and open this up. I'm gonna pull out this first tray, flip it around the other way. So, run this one in a little bit better like that. There we go. Boy, those are looking really good. Um, I'm gonna tell you that I think we only need about seven more minutes, so cancel this off. Uh, okay, seven minutes. We'll see how that does. One thing I don't like to do is overcook my cookies and then they get crunchy. I'm a kind of soft cookie kind of guy. Um, I guess we can leave that out. Um, Leftover cookie dough, always good to have leftover cookie dough. I just don't feel like eating it all right now. So I'm gonna just drop it in this little bag and then at some point tonight, if I feel like I need a little snack, look at that, cookie dough. You know what sounds good with that? Put that on some ice cream. That'd be really good. All right, cookie dough in the fridge. I'll uh, work on cleaning this up for just a minute. And then uh, I'll see you back in six minutes and 20 seconds. All right, that looks like it. 
We are at time. I'm going to actually grab a couple of these just so I don't overheat the granite. And then uh, we'll start pulling out some cookies here. One sheet there. Sheet there. Set that off. And there we have it. Um, uh, Esfahan um, Sablis. Esfahan Sablis. And um, we let them cool here for about 10 minutes. And then once we're done letting them cool, we can put them into a bag or eat them or whatever we want to do. So again, my first episode to try to show you how to create a VR video and uh, why that's important for visual communication and, and really trying to tell your story. So um, like I said earlier, I am no expert at all in cooking. Uh, I'm not in film production, not in video production, but um, what I was able to do today was to create a virtual reality um, cooking truck. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Put your comments down below. Uh, if you haven't gotten a Views XR camera yet, I encourage you to pick one up.